Sorry, one other song. I have to do this. Hello, my name is Bonzo, and today is a very, very special day. Because today, it's somebody's birthday. Uh, whose birthday is it, Bonzo? Is it Mickey Mouse's birthday? No, 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 no. Uh, is it Donald Duck's? No, no, no. Is it Humpty Dumpty's, Bonzo? No, 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 you guys. It's Robin's birthday. Oh. And we're gonna sing the birthday song, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Clap your hands and stamp your feet. Stamp your feet. Let everybody know that it's your birthday treat. Shake your bum <laughs> and sing along. Cause everybody's gonna sing your birthday song. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Everybody sing and dance along. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Everybody sing a birthday song. Okay, everybody, do you want to sing some more? Yeah! Are you sure? Yeah. Happy birthday, Robin. <laughs> okay, let's go back to uh, let's go back to some uh, some other music. No jaws, not. <laughs> Just uh, one moment.
So, welcome everyone. Welcome in Amsterdam. Just change the screen for a moment so you can see my face as I'm really here in my kayak with my pedal. I'm gonna get my earphones because that is uh, that's a little better for now at least so and of course happy birthday robin i said it already but uh, now now specifically so uh, i think you can now hear me a little better and i have my earphones maybe later on i will remove them again because it is very calm over here it's really very calm so um because it is uh, uh yeah because it's a sort of a hidden part of amsterdam where we are right now later on it will be a little more busy but we are starting uh, in the calmer part i need my sunglasses because it is uh, it is a very sunny day beautiful end of the summer weather so and i'm uh, i'm here uh, together of course with oscar you see oscar is better prepared than i have because he is wearing his life jacket i don't have a life jacket i can swim i mean as a dutch kid as a dutch kid there teaching you with so much water in the country, they are teaching you uh, uh, how to walk, how to cycle, how to ice skate, of course, also how to swim. So um, hopefully that's not necessary as long as my kayak, my inflatable kayak, I have a tiny inflatable kayak that I'm using for the kayak tours in and around Amsterdam. So and um, I'm gonna uh, sh show you and take you today uh, alongside several of the canals and uh, I said already we are starting we're starting in I think one of the most beautiful parts of Amsterdam with even some drawbridges behind me uh, my name is Stefan by the way guide in the Netherlands and in Belgium and uh, I'm really excited to have so many people here in my tiny kayak it's a one person's kayak so one person and one beer can just one teddy beer can you can just uh, join um, and aren't you we are in an area that is called the western islands or the westerlijke eilanden in amsterdam so and the thing is and i can show you that you may you are maybe seeing that already um we are not so far away from the train tracks oh there's some waves from oh we're not so far from the train track the train is just coming here in front of us you can see the train that's the train is just got away from Amsterdam Central Station and most going most probably going in the way uh, to uh, or Schiphol or De Hague or Rotterdam another another Dutch city so and we are in the Western Islands just west of the city center of Amsterdam and it's also one of the most I think one of the most beautiful parts um, uh, one of the most beautiful parts of the of, of, of the city, as you can see. And the interesting thing is that it's a lot calmer than the rest of the canal district. And we will see later the, the difference in when we go over the canal district. And the main reason, it, it, or it is related to that train track that we were just seeing. That train track over there, that's the, fr the first train track in the Netherlands was built over there. Uh, somewhere in the 19th, somewhere halfway in the 19th century, and halfway in the 19th century, the Amsterdam the city of Amsterdam decided that they want to have a station, central station. And uh, the only problem was in Amsterdam that there was no place for a station. So they decided to build Amsterdam central station in the water to make an island and place central station over there. And um, so that was the solution, but then still they needed train tracks and there was also no place for train tracks. So they decided to cut it through part of the city center. And just the part behind me right now is um, uh, the part behind me right now. And, uh, and yes, we are live, please. We are live now. So I can just uh, see your questions and answer even if I know the answer. Uh, but if you have questions, just feel free to uh, answer them. No, so what I decided to make the train tracks to cut it through the city and a little part, only a little part of the canal district was at the other side of the train tracks. So and that is the side where we are right now, a very calm and relaxed part of the canal district. Um, uh, what, and this, by the way, this part was not only, that's not only part of the canal district, it also used to be the oldest harbor of Amsterdam. And when I'm talking about the oldest harbor, then I'm talking about the 17th century, 400 years old harbor. So a harbor in the western part. Um, so this was a harbor, also not an area where people were living. 
So uh, originally this was just an area for warehouses, warehouses that were placed everywhere in this, uh, in, in, in this area and uh, people were not living over here. And to be honest, even when people could live here, they didn't want to. And the main reason is that this area over here, it is now one of the most expensive neighborhoods, by the way, in Amsterdam, but people didn't want to live here because it was too stinky. And why it was stinky? Because of several reasons. One, at the left side, the uh, street over there, now you see some more modern buildings. That street over there is called the Tar Street or the Teerstraat, the Teerstraat and the Teer Canal. So this, was, this area was partly used to tar ships. And if you, I don't know if you ever uh, tried to smell tar, that's not really something healthy. So that was one. The second thing is, not only was it the tar, but also this was the area where most of the fish was coming to. And fish that I'm talking about, herring, but I'm from herring, the smaller ones, to the bigger ones like whales. They were all brought to this area. You can maybe imagine in the 17th century, we did not have so many fridges. No, we didn't have any fridges. So the only way to make sure that the... Um, uh, that the fish stayed good was to use it with salt but still there were also a lot of leftovers over here rotten fish so this area you really did not want to live over here so that came only in the last uh in the last 60 to 70 years to be honest so uh so in harbor a harbor in the 17th and 18th century and what then happened at the end of the 18th century is that the ships were getting bigger and bigger. And it was mainly uh, because the first boats from steel were made. And these big boats from steel, they were too big to come into this harbor. So the city of Amsterdam decided to remove the harbor from here, from the western part of the city, and to bring it to the eastern part of the city. So a complete new bigger harbor was built over there. And literally the area over here was left behind. This beautiful area with a lot of warehouses, with these little drawbridges that we see in front of us. Nothing was happening over here for over 100 years. And after, the interesting thing is that uh, there was hardly living anyone. And that took a long time. And then only after World War II, when there was a, uh, when there was a, a period in Amsterdam that a lot of people wanted to live here, but we didn't have enough houses. What happened by that time is that artists were coming over here, coming over here to live, to have to use these old, uh, these old warehouses to make their studios. And uh, bit by bit, people were starting to live over here. And then in the 1960s, the city of Amsterdam, and by the way, these, uh, uh, these people were squatting. They were squatting a lot. End of the 50s, start of the 60s. Had a, the time of the hippies, the time of flower power. Uh, that was the time that all these things were happening. And then at the end of the 60s, the city of Amsterdam made some plans to completely remove this area. They made plans to make a whole new neighborhood. With them. And the main reason for that was that the quality of most of the houses over here was so bad that they were thinking, okay, let's, uh, let's just remove it, build something new, build something better. Uh, and it almost happened. It almost happened. But thanks to some of the squatters that were living over here, I, uh, thanks to the squatters that were living over here, it is still what it is. Because what they were doing is they were going... Uh, to the, uh, they were going to the uh, local governments and uh, they were starting to demonstrate. Starting to demonstrate and in the end, the majority of Amsterdam uh, was following them and they said like, okay, let's uh, leave this area over here, make it an area or just, uh, just make it an area where people can live, a more residential area. And that is what happened. And if you hear something, something that is people that are jumping from the bridge in the water because people are swimming over here, yes. So this happened in the 60s. People start, they started living over here. Some of them are still living over here. It is now, what is it, 60 years later? 
uh, and, uh, and so some of these old hippies they're now in their 70s or 80s they're still living over here and um, it is of course the perfect uh, the perfect location uh, to live and starting as swatters squatters and then now they are millionaires because if you nowadays have a house over here then uh, then you really did very well so just to give you an idea the house prices in this area are about eight to ten thousand euro per square meter so that's about eight hundred to a thousand dollars per square feet so just to give you a little an idea and to be honest yeah you can swim over here although the city of amsterdam is is advising not to and that is mainly because of the tar again so the tar has been provided here for such a long time that it's still on the ground so they did some tests over here and the water over here uh, it looks good of course on a, a summer a warm summer day like today you would really like to uh, to swim over here but it's not so healthy it's not so healthy so uh, it's on your uh, on your own risk and uh, so uh, and you and you can see several people are doing it over here and there are also in this area you can see it on the left side there are several locations tiny uh, tiny little gardens, public gardens or parks, and people are going over there to sit, to swim, to barbecue, to enjoy the sun and everything. So it is a very, uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting neighborhood uh, now. And I'm just gonna let the boat pass. What I'm gonna do, by the way, I think that you can also hear me without my earphones. Well, I have to say it now. Can you still hear me now without my earphones? If so, that's perfect because what I was thinking, this is such a calm and relaxed area that I can play some more music. So we can get a little in the beautiful Amsterdam feeling. <laughs> so just let me know. Yeah, you can hear me? Okay, that's, that's really good. Then let me find some more music and then we're gonna play that oh, that's a little hard with my sunglasses with all the sun but i still have some nearby normally um, and look how beautiful it is over here even more if the boats are gone after a while then you see the uh, edit, then you see that the water is almost like a, like a mirror so that's really 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 beautiful so it's like a big mirror, almost. Okay, we're gonna listen to some music. Thank you. 
so we are a little further now in another part in a little wider water and over here hi over here you can see that there are a lot more houseboats that are placed on the place on the side so <laughs> there are now some people waving at you um, now there's a whole row of houseboats over here uh, that uh, are using the old the old harbor and um, also here just in uh, at the side of us between the canal and the water at the other side we have a new island a new reclaimed piece of Amsterdam and the interesting part over here that what we see over here in front of us is the most densely populated area of uh, the Netherlands not even from Amsterdam but from the Netherlands and it's so densely populated that they decided that there was not enough place for kids to play and what they did is they used some old boats to make a play garden for kids and you can now see it in front of us in front of us you see there are three boats uh, next to each other and uh, these three are connected to each other and on these three boats there are kids playing so it's a very interesting way of, uh, of uh, making some extra space for kids and now the kids of course also jumping in the water uh, but it's an interesting uh, interesting way of uh, uh, making some extra space for kids to play and what we're gonna do now we are now pedaling again towards the train track so you see the train in front of us just stopping in front of Amsterdam Central Station and under the train under the train then we will come into the other part of the canal district and you will uh, you will immediately see um, you will you will immediately see immediately see that it will be a little bit busier over there so there will be more boats more people on the side so the calm part is only at this part only at this side so um, and yes aren't you it's really good that the squatters did this but in the uh, on the end uh, they're also very lucky because it was uh, the perfect investment to start living in these houses because nowadays it's one of the most expensive areas you can uh, you can think of and uh, Cheryl is asking about the tar in the water uh, of course it is also not good for the wildlife over here uh, the, 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 yeah the only thing is that uh, the poison is already there for a very long time so and it's too expensive to remove it so uh, yeah it's also for wildlife it is not completely not completely clear the, the only thing is that the water over here in the Amsterdam canals they are um, they are uh, uh, clean, yeah they're, they're trying to clean it up and also uh, flushing it uh, flushing it a lot so uh, it's a bit by bit it will get better but most probably it will take hundreds of years before the tar and before the complete pollution is gone so you'll see the church there at the other side and another uh, another train that's a slower train by the way that we see over there and how do I know it's a, sl a slower train because it has another design than the than the faster trains and uh, where we had at first at the left side we had really the old barges here at the left side you see another type of houseboats that are more uh, floating shoe boxes or that's how we call them in Amsterdam so the floating shoe boxes are over here and a little more modern more luxury most of the time then of course but of course a little less uh, a little less cute than the than the original ones so okay in the meantime there is a on my gimbal and on my phone there's a tiny spider and the whole time i'm thinking that it will go in front of the camera so it's a very tiny one so most probably you don't you will not even see it uh, but it's going to the left to the right so i'm not only with oscar on the boat it is also uh, <laughs> there's also uh, a little spider a very tiny spider a white one by the way but well, it's not there are no dangerous spiders in the netherlands so it's no problem to have him here on the boat with me so i'm just gonna 
go here you see in front of us yeah we have to pedal a little further it's good uh, this, I don't have to go to the gym uh, today uh, today anymore because that's uh, that's that's already done and then at the left side <laughs> side you see a more modern bridge so they're not all old bridges there are also some more modern ones but I want to go to the other side and let's play a little more music while we're paddling under one moment uh, let me see Yeah, we have a lot of wildlife over here. Ducks, spiders, and coots. Maybe a swan. There's a big boat coming, I have to be. It's going too fast. city center of Amsterdam we're now going under 
the Haarlemmer Dijk, one of the dikes that was protecting the city of Amsterdam. And uh, you can see the white poles in front of us. These poles are from the water lock. So we're now inside the water lock. Uh, and you can maybe also see that the case here at this side are a little lower than they were at the other side when we were going uh, at, at, at the other side of the first uh, water lock. And that's because we're now going from basically uh, in the old times from the sea uh, from the sea level to inside the city and inside the city that means that we had to go down that we had to go down for about five feet about one and a half meters so the water level over here is about one and a half meters under sea level imagine that so nowadays we don't need that anymore not here not here anymore but uh, uh, in the old times you had to get inside of Amsterdam so you were going from the harbors into the city center and then you had to go through the water lock so and yes if you're getting a little seasick I'm sorry I said already there are a lot more boats over here even more on a beautiful day like today um, but yeah the, the, the good thing is that I have a gimbal so it's stabilizing a lot for me there's a lot more uh, that I feel all the little waves and hopefully you can still hear me let me know if that's the case. If not, I can uh, use my earphones again. I also have to focus here a little more on the... Uh, a little more on all the traffic around. So... And then we're getting here on, I think, one of the most beautiful corners that you can find in Amsterdam. You can hear me? Okay, that's good. Also, <laughs> recognizable, not very far away. Now here in front of us, we have, we have over here in front of us, that place over there, that is one of the oldest cafes of Amsterdam from 1641 to be precise. So almost 400 years old and uh, it's already for almost 400 years a cafe. So called it Papen Island, the island of the Papists and uh, it's looking over two canals at the left side or in front of us we have the Prinsengracht the canal of the princes and here at the right side although it is now not the most beautiful because they're doing a lot of maintenance but here at the right side we have the Brouwersgracht or the brewery canal the Brouwersgracht not because there were brewers over here but mainly because there were the warehouses over here had uh, uh, had mainly uh, beer, had beer bottles and beer inside. So, but I'm not going over the Prinsengracht today. I've done that before another time. What I'm gonna do is I'm going a little against traffic and then taking the next canal because that is a little calmer. That's a little calmer. And also the Prinsengracht is a one-way canal. So, we're just gonna pass this guys over here hi oh there was even a little doggy on the on the boat sorry you missed that so <laughs> okay so here we're further going over the brewery canal the Brouwersgracht here it is still beautiful and look at the right side on top of this houseboat it's a beautiful houseboat by the way there are two little angels sitting at the side over there you can maybe just see it they're sitting there looking over the water little little details that you can find everywhere and yeah the Brouwersgracht is I think one of the maybe even the most beautiful canal that we have in Amsterdam and it is basically uh, passing all the other canals so we first have the Prinsengracht we're now getting slowly towards the old city center or the oldest part of the city center and Amsterdam if you look at the map sorry that I don't have a map but if you look at the map then you can see that there are four canals in a row and we were just at the, the Prinsengracht that is the first one we're now going to the third one where we see the red boat is coming out city sightseeing they're one of the bigger uh, the bigger boats always have to be careful for 
these ones because they will not stop for a little inflatable kayak and most probably he has to turn over here he has to turn well yeah does it even fit how is he going to turn is he going to the right or the left that's always the question oh he's going the same way Quite cool. Okay, we're going under under the next canal. Let's do the side one over here. You have to be careful because there are other boats coming. There's a nice reflection of the sun. Yeah, the, this canal is a little calmer than the, than the other one. But there's still houseboats on the side. And also a nice thing of this canal is that here at the left side, as you can see, uh, you can see the houses a little better. Most parts in summertime, it's always harder to see the, uh, the canal houses in Amsterdam, but over here you can see them uh, pretty well. And that has a sad reason because there have been some storms in the last, uh, in the last three years. The one was quite recently and several of the uh, trees here at the left side uh, fell because of uh, because of one of these storms so that's why it's a little less green and they're not gonna immediately plant trees back because they're also having to restore this canal this uh, side of the canal too so a lot of the canals in Amsterdam needs to be restored but look how beautiful this is with all these canal houses and we're now in the western part of the canal district and the western parts uh, that means that the oldest canal houses are over here because in Amsterdam in the 17th century when the city was becoming four times as big as before uh, they were building the canal district and they were starting that in the western part and bit by bit they were going east so the oldest ones and the oldest ones that I'm talking about the 1610, 1620, 1630 are the ones that we see over here so if you're living over here if you're living over here, then you're living in one of the oldest uh, parts of the canal. And Shiva Balan, yeah, that is, it, is, it, is, it is very calm over here. And to be honest, this is not a river. This is a man-made canal. A man-made canal where we're now paddling over. And we're paddling over the Keizersgracht. The Kaiser Canal. So, uh, we have to sit a little different. <laughs> Because it is, it is, by the way, a, a very hot day today. It is still, I think, 25, 26 degrees. So almost 90 Fahrenheit. So uh, when paddling, I'm getting sweaty immediately. And even Oscar is like uh, whew, a little, a little sweaty. He is, uh, he is asleep the whole time. So I'm just can lay him over here. He is. Uh, look at this. Look at this. What he is doing. He is just uh, relaxing, uh, relaxing over here in front of uh, on the front of my kayak. So, <laughs> Oscar, you're in the view. Go away. <laughs> okay, just let's go. Now you can also see my kayak a little more. I will. One moment, I will change the screen again. No, but all these canals are man-made. It's good to know when they were making the city bigger in the 17th century. They were uh, deciding uh, to make a whole new part of the city. But yeah, Amsterdam is built on a swamp. It's still built on a swamp. So um, they had to get rid of the water, get rid of a lot of water. And the best way to get rid of the water is by, uh, is by uh, digging canals. So by hands, hundreds, maybe even thousands of men were working over here. To, uh, to dig up the ground. And what were they doing with the ground? They were using it on both sides. They were using it on both sides uh, to make both of the case a little higher. So both of the case had to make, had, they had to make them higher. And the main reason is, uh, again, we are under sea level with high tides, it could flood. So they needed to make it, uh, to make it higher. 
And then, yeah, getting rid of the water, that was the main purpose of the canals. But of course, soon after that, uh, Amsterdam, uh, really a city of traders, so uh, of trading and of traders. So um, people started also trading, trading over the water. The small boats were going to the warehouses, to the canal houses to get their stuff in and out. Um, and that was where the uh, canal was used for. And then the third reason, it was also our open sewage system. So that's the dirty part of the story. Very dirty over here. Uh, and uh, that's only very recently that the city is, uh, is, is not so dirty anymore. And when I'm talking about very recently, then I'm talking about the last 40 years. Because the last canal house was only connected to the sewer in the um, connected to the sewer in the 90s. So, oh, in Richmond it is a little uh, warmer than over here. Yeah, that's possible. For Amsterdam, this is very warm. This is very hot. Uh, for even more for September. But of course, we are lucky to have this. That's wonderful. I'm just gonna play a little music again when we are going a little further. Um. Oh, wait. Thank you. 
Okay, just getting you a little also to show you the side of the and it is it is reverse, yeah, it is reverse if I'm uh, I'm turning uh, if I'm turning the camera. So, but look how beautiful the house is over here on the side, little rococo style, baroque uh, style of this uh, of this house next to some bigger ones, some of the biggest uh, bigger houses that you can find uh, on the on the canal. So and I'm just gonna pedal a little further and just have to see where this boat is going to. Oh no, I had a beautiful construction and now of course, boy, there we are again. And I heard, I heard you talking about parking your car and as you can see here on the side, there's a little railing just in front of the cars that is to make sure that people uh, will not drive their cars uh, inside, inside the water. So they have been thinking about it and to be honest, that little railing, oh, wait, 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 sorry, I have to fix my gimbal a little. Yeah, there we are. Okay, this is, uh, I think this is better. So, no, but the, these railings, they have been installed in the, in the 80s, uh, and mainly, and not, and it's, it's not paid by the city center. It's not paid, it's paid by the city of Amsterdam, it's paid by the insurance companies. Because the insurance companies, they had to pay so many cars that ended up in the canal. Mainly because of people were forgetting to use their handbrake when they were parking. So uh, cars were rolling in the water sometimes just in the middle of the day. So that's why they installed this little railing. And that's only for the parking spots where, uh, so not for parallel parking, it's only for the parking spots where you are parking diagonal against, uh, uh, towards the canals. So, and the, 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 the thing is, the thing is that of course there are also canals where you're parallel parking and that is, that is I think even harder because then you have to park your car and making sure that you are uh, not driving in the not that you're not driving inside the canal but not only that also when you then just park your car imagine that you're standing here on this side parking your car like this then you're stepping out of the car and then there's a chance that you're just jumping uh, that you're just ending up in the water so your car is on the K but you're just stepping uh, you're just stepping in the water so that is uh, that's a little the risk of parking, uh, parking over there. And yeah, Amsterdam is of course not a, not a city made for cars. It is a 17th century canal district. In that time we had carriages. So there is space for your carriage, but not for your, uh, not for your SUV, or not even for your car, to be honest. So what the city of Amsterdam is doing, uh, and the majority of the population is supporting that, bit by bit they are removing parking spots. Several parts of the canal district they removed already all the parking spots. Um, so you can just still come to your house by car but you cannot park your car in front anymore. And that is just to give the city back to people, to people walking and cycling. Ah, look how beautiful it is also over here. So the Keizersgracht is also, uh, the houses over here are a little more luxury, a little more luxury than uh, the houses on the Prinsengracht. So and that the main reason is that more rich or richer traders uh, were building their houses over here in comparison to the next canal. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, look at that, uh, look at that orange car that, uh, at the right side. That's also a car you don't see a lot in Amsterdam. Not only SUVs, but also, uh, I'm not so into cars, but it looks a little too much American for me. Too big, the wheels are also, I think, the double size of other cars. <laughs> so, yeah, Amsterdam, like, by the way, most uh, old European cities are not built for cars, so. And yeah, the city of Amsterdam is really trying to remove as much as possible. 
So, ah, I hope you enjoy it uh, here on the water to hear something about the city. If you have any questions about Amsterdam, about the canals, about where we are, just feel free. That is the, it is the time uh, for that. And yeah, Susan, on this canal, there are no houseboats. That is true, the first part were, but this part, it is, uh, it is not allowed. And also several parts, they are uh, removing the houseboats because they have to uh, do construction work for the case. So it is, uh, that's also, that can also be the reason. But this part, this part is only uh, to park your little boat, as you can see at the left side, but not for houseboats. Yeah, with uh, such good weather, there are so many people, so many people that wanna that wanna be outside. And look at the ladder here on the side. I don't know. I think <laughs> someone wanted to uh, to swim a little and place this uh, ladder there on the side. And yeah, Delors. Uh, I see you're from Seattle. That's uh, the interesting thing is that I was already telling you a little about the 60s and in the 1960s also there were uh, a lot of people in Amsterdam that wanted to make this city also for cars. So there were big plans to make a highway to remove bigger parts of the city. So not only the little part where we started the tour but also different other parts they wanted just to make uh, big highways. But the good thing is that the Amsterdammers didn't want that. There were a lot of protests, a lot of demonstrations uh, to keep our city car free, to keep our city for bicycles. So and one of the most famous, one of the most famous protests was that thousands of Amsterdammers came uh, to the museum square. At that moment, the museum square was just a highway, was just a big road. And they were coming over there. They were placing their, uh, their bikes on the street just place them thousands of bicycles just on the street so no car or bus could still could pass anymore and they did that for several days they did that for several days and uh, that was one of the yeah one of the most famous protests so uh, yeah and if you have to search your car over here then there is a chance that it's in the water by the way the same can be for your bike okay let's uh, get some music again I need to, uh, I did my whole playlist, so I'm now going to another playlist. I have enough. Only have to make sure, have to make sure that I'm choosing the good one and not uh, a haunted tour or so. <laughs> because I also have that kind of tours. Um, uh, this one is, I think, good. Let's see. Yeah, I have some good music.
That was haunting enough, I think. The Titanic coming to me. I, I'm seeing, I think, almost every time that I'm here. <laughs> I'm seeing the Titanic. And it's still there. It's still uh, floating. But I would never uh, name my boat uh, the Titanic. But you saw it from nearby. <laughs> Hey Chero, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm just playing some music, but I have very big lists of things. And what I did is, um, before, and I can maybe do that again, uh, share some of my most played music uh, on my Facebook group. So I don't know if you are on my Facebook group, if not, maybe someone can share it. Um, because I'm, uh, I'm literally using hundreds of, uh, hundreds of songs, but I made before a Spotify list. A Spotify list with some of the music that I uh, that I'm using more often so then at least you have an idea so but yeah I have a, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of uh, nice music and I'm always trying to fit it a little in the feeling for a tour but of course I have my favorites and I was playing some new music today that I didn't, didn't play before I only didn't bring the Titanic, maybe next time. <laughs> I should bring that every time when I'm on the kayak. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm uh, nearby the end of my tour. And why this is the end, I'm st uh, stopping somewhere else from where I started. So because I've been paddling back over several canals, back to nearby my tiny office. I have a tiny office just on the Prinsengracht at the end, nearby the bridge over there. So, and here's the best, uh, here's the best way to, uh, to get out of the water. And I have a place for my, uh, I also have a place for my, uh, for my kayak. So I, uh, I really hope that you enjoyed it. I'm just going to change the screen for a moment. So I hope you enjoyed it to be on the water with me on a little calming tour, a little less information. That is, uh, I'm trying to keep that for my, for my other tours. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a person from uh, uh, meditational or that kind of tours, but at least I think something like this can also, can also fit. So uh, yes, I will deflate my kayak, of course, and then uh, gonna use it again, by the way, later this week, because on Thursday, this is already in two days from now, that was a planned tour. On Thursday, I will take my inflate, my tiny inflatable kayak to the uh, to Kinderdijk, and Kinderdijk is the area where there are a lot of boats now wanting to pass me. Now, Kinderdijk is the area of the um, the windmills in the Netherlands, where you have 19 different windmills. And I will kayak over there at night time. So it will be a very special day because there is one day per year only, one day per year only, that the um, that the, the windmills are uh, that they have lights on every on every windmill. So and that will be this Thursday. So I'm gonna take you over there, and then we will uh, hopefully see some beautiful. Uh, some beautiful windmills the thing is i did the same location last year and then i started paddling and then there was a lot of lightning so i had the most crazy tour ever i think or one of my most crazy tours ever uh in the thunderstorm with uh a beautiful uh, windmills and everything so hopefully uh this thursday so in two days from now it will not uh, there will be no thunderstorms and just normal weather it will be weather like this most probably but then uh, already uh, during night time so uh, hopefully uh, hopefully I see some of you again so uh, and yes I uh, managed to uh, get back oh, and some people are starting to play music over here it's party time that's by the way officially not allowed in the boats so my music is allowed if uh, as long as I'm not uh, doing it uh, too loud um, so uh, but I hopefully to see some of you on Thursday that will be my kayak again Oscar of course will also join Oscar is here so uh, I hope to uh, I hope to see you again that time thank you for all the support for people that are uh, members via buy me a coffee that is uh, I'm using that to keep on doing tours to go to other locations and I'm going to other locations again because this uh, uh, this Friday so Thursday I will be in Kinderdijk and in Friday I will go to um, the oldest city in the Netherlands and the oldest city in the Netherlands that is the city of Nijmegen and that is a city that was already there in Roman times it's the, uh, there are two cities in the Netherlands that are from Roman times one of them is Nijmegen and I will go there and show you the beautiful city center so uh, that will be uh, will be an amazing one and then on Sunday on Sunday there are a lot of tours because of, also because of the good weather on Sunday I will go uh, to show you some of the header fields because it's now the time that the header is blooming uh, and that is amazing that's also amazing so uh, thank you again for joining I hope to see you again another time maybe Thursday or Friday or Sunday or maybe on all of them thank you bye bye see you again I'm going to have uh, I think a beer or something like that bye bye I'll to turn it off.